Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Bee Shop and another fun project today. I know for the last several weeks we've been working on this Pearson Pro Palette system, so we are done with palettes for a while. Don't have anything to do with palettes going on today. In fact, we're going to be using the Tormach to cut some parts today, and because I need to use some longer drill bits and I want to use a larger vise, actually pulling that whole pallet system off the Tormach and we're just going to put a standard five inch vise back on there for the project today. So what we're going to work on, again if you scroll way back in my channel a little over a year ago I made some custom wheel hubs for a gentleman who wanted to put like a Camaro wheels, Camaro front end on his 85 Chevy Silverado. So today we are going to make the caliper bracket so that he can use the Brembo brakes from a Camaro as well on this uh, same setup in the system that he's got going on. So he's changing out the rest of the front end parts. He has already he designed it in Fusion 360. He's actually 3D printed one out of plastic and found a couple of issues, a couple of errors with it. So he's corrected those, has an updated design, and we're going to go ahead and make that today. Going to make a prototype out of uh, 6160 aluminum, and then we're going to make the actual parts out of some heat treated 4140 bar stock. So it should be pretty fun. Going to be cutting some, uh, some pretty large pieces out on the Tormach and uh, working with some solid steel and some bigger chunks than I've done. Definitely way bigger pieces than uh, the knife pieces that I'm typically making on my Tormach. So we'll uh, turn the camera around, let me show you the pieces and the parts. I've already done some stock prep. I just did a lot of that on my manual mill, just getting all the stock to be the same size. So I'll drop in some of the video of prepping the stock and getting it cut to length and all that. But let's take a quick look at the parts, the pieces, and then we'll go jump on the computer, take a look in Fusion at this design, and talk through how we're going to cut this on the Tormach. And then we'll get down here and we'll start making some chips. Hey, for those of you new to the channel, I encourage you to go back, take a look at some of the videos on there. If you like what you see on machining, welding, Fusion 360, knife making, everything going on here in the Blades to Be shop, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and continue to support this channel as we grow. And if you like this video, hey, drop a like, drop a comment. We'd love to hear from you. For those of you already subscribed to the channel, sure appreciate you watching these videos. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Kind of a mix of some manual machining and just some good custom one-off prototype work. Always the fun stuff. So let's go ahead, take a look at the parts, and then we'll look in Fusion. Take a look at the bench. All right, so here is the the new front end piece that he's going to put on the vehicle. So that hub that I made, it fits on here. Should have had him leave that here. We could have seen it all going together, but I'll try and get a picture of that before he picks up all the parts. So the hub mounts on here, and because when the hub is on here and you've got your brake rotor sticking out, you need to be able to slide this caliper in over top. So that's why we end up we're making a split bracket here so that these two pieces can slide in there around the rotor and get in place and be bolted in there. And this is 3D printed out of plastic right here. So this is the first piece we're going to make. Half inch thick gets bolted onto the frame here but these two big countersunk bolts gets those out of the way. Once that piece is in place then here's the other half that we have to make and that's going to bolt onto the caliper and again, once this is in place, then that's going to allow that to slide over top of the rotor and slide in there up against that piece. So they are going to go together and fit together just like that. These contours aren't quite the same. Again, we've got a slightly redesigned version on one half and he did a little bit of modification on this one to get it to fit. So he's made those updates to the drawing and we're now ready to cut a prototype and get that to work. All right, just some of the other prep work. Been having this saw running while I've been over here cleaning up some of the pieces and getting them squared off on the mill. So once we get all this done, then we'll get to the CNC, get all this in the Tormach and actually cut out some pieces. All right, just some of the boring stuff here, doing some of the stock prep. Just doing this on the manual mill. A lot faster for me than going in there and trying to program something. So just knocking this out, getting all ready to put in the CNC machine. Just taking about 25 thou off there, feeding that at about 4 inches per minute. Like I say, just a lot easier to get these squared up a little bit on the manual mill than to try to get them up there and run a program on all the way to So you can see I'm just using a large dowel to hold these in the vise, make sure I'm pushing that same 
flat side of the stock up against the fixed jaw, flip it straight over, face off the other edge, and then I'm going to hold those two edges in the jaw to face off the top or in some cases the top and the bottom. I'm not looking for perfect stock at this point. I just want to make sure that the edges and the top are square enough that when I reclamp it in the vise, it's going to hold it. You'll see when I go to machine it, I am going to square off the flat surface to make sure that the holes going through are exactly 90 degrees. So I'm going to make sure that we do a finish cut once it's in the Tormach. All right, just a quick shot of these. So taking this facing cut, got a little bit of chatter on there. So I grabbed my screw jacks and I was just able to fit them in there on the nut of the vise down there. Got that in there on both sides. Just very, very little pressure. Don't want to uh, push up the piece, but no chatter on this end. We'll come back and cut the other way and see if we get a nice clean cut all the way back. Not getting any chatter at all going back this way. Able to get nice, clean, full three inch cut with that face mill. Getting a pretty decent finish on there as well. Yeah, this heat treated 4140 is a lot less gummy than trying to use some of the standard 4140. So happy with how this is coming out. We're getting there. Well, definitely no chatter problems with the thick pieces. Those just knock off, no problem at all. Only have 30 thou on these, so taking 15 on side. All right, well, there is our last piece of stock prep complete. I know I try to keep my shop clean, but yeah, I don't think anybody can accuse me of not making a mess in here. We definitely have chips all the way from one end of the shop to the other. Yeah, be a little bit of work to clean that up. Getting kind of spoiled with the Tormach. Everything stays inside, but fun to get back on the manual mill for a little while. All right, let's take a look at all these pieces. Get them over in the Tormach. So over here is all our material. So I've got the half inch pieces. I've got an extra 20 thou on those. I already finished one side as I was roughing those out. Got 20 thou extra on the other side. So we've got nice square edges. We'll clamp that down. Nice flat surface, take 20 thou off, drill our holes, get that set up. And then we'll flip it over, bolt it onto a jig plate. So I've got this one inch piece of aluminum. I'm gonna use this as a jig plate to be able to finish all these pieces. We're gonna put some holes, use some dowel pins to line it up and bolt it onto this. And that's how we'll cut out that contour after it's done. This thicker piece, a little bit more of a challenge in the fact that I don't have uh, end mills long enough to profile all the way down an inch and a half thickness, at least not in some carbide ones. So as we finish the holes on top, we're actually gonna cut down three quarters of an inch, cut out the profile, and then same thing. We've got some dowel pins, we'll flip it over, we'll clamp that bolt that onto our jig plate and then we will finish the contours on the other side and unlike that prototype one we've got a couple of bosses you'll see those when we go look in fusion and get a better look at this this one and a half inch piece i went ahead and finished this to thickness on the manual mill so that it is ready to go we're not taking a facing cut off of that one when we get it in the tormach you'll see there's just two little tabs that are left sticking up so figured i may as well knock it out no sense in doing a facing cut middle piece of it we're still going to all cut out and make sure that the holes are square to that mating face so after after we get done with the aluminum pieces, then got my 4140 here. Same thing, I already have this prepped. So this one, I made sure I cut the edges where this was roughly saw cut or water jet cut. I'm not sure how they had cut it, but it was pretty rough. It was only within about 20 thou of being parallel. Didn't want to use that to clamp in the vise. So prepped all the stock, got that ready to go. And uh, here's our nice big heavy one and a half inch thick pieces. Same thing, we've got these all nice and prepped on the edges and these are finished down to our one and a half inch thickness. They are ready to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at Fusion in the computer. Let's take a better look at this whole design and what we're gonna do, and then we'll head over to the Tormach and start cutting them out. Let's go see what's on the computer. All right, we're not gonna spend a lot of time in Fusion. Just wanna take a quick look at the machining strategy before we get down on the Tormach. So for the first side of this half inch piece, we're gonna set up with our XYZ. We're gonna actually probe this. We're back holding in a vise. So just gonna probe that top left corner over there for X, Y, and Z. And then we're gonna go through, take a quick face off the top of this. We've got 20 thou of extra material. So I did now break that down into two cuts, 10 thou a piece. Go through and bore these holes. I don't have a drill that's over half an inch. So just gonna go through and bore those really quick. Use that same tool bit to rough bore these countersinks in just a standard boring pattern. It goes through and it step bores those out. And then we'll finish bore all the way through for the hole that goes through those. Then we're gonna change out to that 82 degree countersink bit and we will finish boring on those countersink holes. 
After that, change over to a 1 8 tool bit, put a quick quarter inch bore the holes in there, and then I'm going to finish those out with a quarter inch reamer. That's going to be for our dowel pins to align this when we flip it over. And then just quickly put a little bevel on the top side of those holes. Then we're going to flip it over to the back side. All right, once we get onto the back side of the part, first thing you'll notice is our XYZ is no longer up in the corner. So on our jig plate, I'm actually going to probe into the center of that quarter inch dowel pin hole that's going to be on the jig plate. And I'm going to use the top of the jig plate as my Z marker. That's going to be my XYZ coordinates. So that's going to be easy to set up. And then on this side, it's just two tools, one tool, and I'm going to use a side milling. I see this all the time on some YouTube videos. Everybody seems to swear by using the side milling and we're just going to do step overs to cut those contours on there. We'll see how that does. And then after that, we've got this one eighth chamfer to put around the whole part. So that's pretty much it for the backside. And then we get over to our larger piece. Same thing, we're gonna do X, Y, Z up in the top left corner. We don't have to face the entire part, but we have to cut this first pocket. So I've got a 3 8 end mill that I'm gonna to use to cut that out. And then once we have that done, I'm gonna go bore these counter bore holes out. And then once that's done, we're gonna go through and bore the center of those out to go all the way through. Yeah, my cutter is only designed to cut seven eighths deep, is as deep as it will cut. But as long as I counter bore first, then I've got enough length to cut, I can get in there and do the bore the rest of the way through. We'll do the same step over side milling concept here, except now we're going a little deeper. We're gonna be down a full 775 deep off the highest point over here on the side. For the rest of it, we're gonna be a quarter of an inch less for those little steps. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We will bore and ream for our locator pins for when we flip it over. And then we've got the holes that we need to tap drill over here. So we're gonna tap those M12 by 1.75, put a quick spot drill on those, drill the tap drill size, and then I'm gonna go through and put a chamfer on those. I have not had good luck rigid tapping for holes half inch and larger on this Tormach. It might handle it in the aluminum. I don't think at all that it's gonna handle it in that 4140, so I may as well just find a way to hand tap those now and make sure I'm doing the prototype the same way I'm gonna do the finished piece. So that's what we're gonna do on the top side of this one. And then when we flip this part over, same thing. Now we're gonna do our X, Y, Z off of that dowel pin, that locator spot on there on our jig plate. And then the first thing we're gonna do is the contour. So we're gonna go down and get rid of the rest of the material using that side mill machining technique again. After that, we'll cut down the pocket. So we'll take the other quarter inch off of this and leave those bosses sticking up. This is the design change, a little bit different than that 3D printed plastic one. We've got these bosses sticking up to give a little bit of clearance on that caliper where these bolt into place and then and leave some room around that caliper to sit. After that, I'm gonna go in with a quarter inch end mill to give that big radius that we need on these. Just do a couple of quick chamfers around the top of the bosses, around those holes. Gonna do a heavy chamfer around the outside. This one is a quarter inch chamfer. So I did that in a couple of step overs instead of trying to cut that all at once. Again, might be able to handle that in the aluminum. Don't think it's gonna handle that in the 4140. So we step over, machine that chamfer in three steps. And then the last piece is I've got a 3D mill, this large chamfer here on the front end. So that's what the piece will look like. So again, we're gonna get in there with that quarter inch end mill and bore on the outside of these bores to get that radius down in there. 3D mill this one and heavy chamfer cut. So that's what we've got on this piece. Final thing we're gonna do, here's our jig plate. For the jig plate, we're just gonna put some drilled and tapped holes in there. We've got our locator pins set up for those quarter inch dowel pins. And then I've got the steps on the side. The thin half inch plate just bolts right down on top. That one and a half inch thick plate, it needs to flip upside down and it's got those little tabs that stick out. So we've got some clearance on here. Those tabs will stick down over top of this step right here and bolt into place. And we're just gonna face it to make sure that that when we drill and tap it, everything is nice and square. Drill and ream some holes in there and we'll be set up with our jig plate. That's pretty much everything we're gonna do. Let's head on down to the Tormach and let's go start making some chips. All right, well, we got the Pearson Pro Pallet system off here. Got that five inch vise in place, bolted on. Got that trammed in and I am happy with how the tram came out on this. Make sure I don't blow off the end. There we go, yeah, I would say we are spot on. Let's get the rest of our tools put together and put in here and we'll get our first piece mounted in there. All right, so we're about to get set up on this piece. Since I'm gonna put this actually down this way and this top piece is not finished, my thickness isn't quite accurate. So I took a reading off of the bottom of the vise and then I just measured up 
the thickness of my parallels plus the 520 stock thickness I should have. I'll do a double check on Z once I get this in place. I've already zeroed on the back of the vise right here. So we'll get this in, we'll set our X point, and then we'll come back and we'll double check Z in the middle. I should actually be off by about three thou because the center of this reads a little bit thicker than the edges. And uh, get my screw jacks under here and we should be ready to go ahead and execute this program. I've got all my tools loaded, reset the height on them, had to go through and put together a couple of new tools for this project. So we should be all set to go and get this first cycle done. I'm off by 3.5 so yes that's what I was reading too is I'm reading the center of this a little bit thick so I think my kind of that single point of origin concept so I'm liking that uh, height that we've got set there All right, so I've got my setup sheet, so we're going off of this top corner. So I did Y off of the vise. I did this off the end of the piece, which, you know, it is crooked, but we've got an extra eighth of an inch off of each end. So we should be good. And we're just going to go through and put the holes. We're going to do those big counter sinks in there. And we're going to make a couple of small dowel pin holes. And that's what we're going to use for our alignment when we flip this over. We should be in good shape. All right, we're using a full 10 tools between uh, the three different operations on this, doing the front side, the back side contours, well, actually five operations, and we're doing the front and the back side of the thicker bracket, plus making the jig plate, so 10 tools total. I went ahead and put them in here more or less in order this time, except for tool number three, but I've got one, then three, then 10, 11, 13, 35, 41, 43, 59 and 50 so almost all the way around in order as I've got those in there and then we've got our file loaded so I'm doing the thin bracket the face and drill I'm back on a G54 so I've been using my pallet system with that G59.3 but I'm back on G54 we probed our part and I'm actually going to go in there and I'm going to change this to low and I'm going to go move that belt right now I'm going to leave the M01 brake on and just get in the habit of doing this I'm sure it'll be fine in the aluminum but I find with that two and a half inch face mill on here when I'm only running it at 300 rpm uh, really the belt tends to slip a little bit sometimes in high so I find I do a lot better off if I'm in low so just to practice on this prototype I'm going to go ahead and do that and then also all the speeds and feeds on this are going to be set for that uh, 4140 the tougher material so I'm going to be running a little bit slow for aluminum I'll probably manually turn up some of the speeds and feeds after I make sure that the program is good but uh, I didn't want to have to redo the program I wanted to really test it and make sure that the speeds and feeds looked good for what we're going to be getting in that 4140 and we don't have chatter issues also, I need to grab those uh, screw jacks and put those underneath here to make sure we don't get chatter. Uh, this is the piece that tends to get chatter when we get on there with that face mill. So let me get those screw jacks in there, and I think we're nearly ready to push go. There we go. Got those in place under there. And they even have more surface contact now that they're down on the bed instead of just sitting on top of a, a bolt. So we should be good there. All right, let's run it. So that first stop went well. I'm gonna put the speed back up. I did manually turn up the speeds and feeds a little bit in the aluminum, so still got a decent finish. All right, let me turn the speed back up. We'll cycle start the rest of this off.
while those are roughed out, pretty awesome how it just bored down in there and roughed out those countersinks. I've got an 82 degree countersink tool coming up next that's gonna finish those and did a nice job boring these other holes. Got just a touch of chatter, could hear it a little bit, can barely see it in this hole. So I think we're pretty good. I did move the screw jacks around to make sure that I wouldn't interfere with that hole. Screw jacks are helping, but still just a touch of chatter on those plates hanging out there. And then I also just realized that I needed to make sure that this number 43 tool is at least an inch and a half out before I get to that other piece because it's gonna counter bore and bore. The, the length of cut on it is gonna work. I don't need a full inch and a half length of cut because of the two stage of doing the counter bores first on the other piece. But I do need to make sure that just overall tool length, I have an inch and a half to clear getting all the way through that plate. So I need to make sure I adjust that before I move on to my next step. I'd made a note and forgot to execute. So uh, put the note right in front of me and make sure we get that for the next one. So far it's good. Clean up those holes. We're gonna drop those uh, dowel pin holes in there for my lineup on the jig plate. And just gonna do a quick deeper on the, the top side of these holes and this program will be done. All right, I just had to pause for another quick look. That was just so cool. So it actually feels way more amazing than it looks. You can kind of see where it was stepping down on that bore, but because it's stepping down with the 82 degree angle tool, you, you really can't feel those at all. Just a typical kind of machining marks like these on the top. So that turned out pretty awesome. That was a concern spot. I guess we'll see how it does in the 4140, but uh, that seems rigid enough and worked well enough. So, all right, let's finish this thing up. Well, there it is. There's the first of four steps complete on these. So we've got the first side of the first one. Now we're going to go do the drilling, counter boring, all that on the second, the thicker piece. And then after we make the jig plate, then we'll do the back sides of both of them. So it's going to be a little more interesting when we do the thick one because we will be doing the contours halfway down on it. So let's get it set up in here. All right, we've got the next file loaded. So we got this thick bracket. Even though I put face and drill, we're not actually facing this side. It is already finished the thickness. We're just gonna do a lot of machining out, leave just these little tabs on the end, and then go through and drill and counter bore some holes in there, plus contour around the outside afterwards. Got a lot of machining on this one to get it cut out and shaped. I'm back on G54. I did set it to G55 for a minute. I reset tool number 43. I made sure that it is sticking out far enough that we're not gonna have a collision in here. And we've got our piece loaded back in there again. I don't need the screw jacks on this one. I didn't have any chatter problems with this thickness, so we should be good. Let's execute part two. And there we go, wrapping up this big cut at depth and then taking this final little finish cut off the edge to make sure that we're setting the overall width on this accurately for that other piece to be able to drop in there. And we'll move on to the next step in the operation, which for this one is putting these big counter bores in there. 
it seemed to be cutting okay, but I could definitely hear the chips getting stuck in there against the sidewall, so kind of grinding, and you could just kind of hear it spitting chips out a little bit. So I went ahead and paused after this to try to see if I could come up with a better way to do this op. All right, another tweak to the code. I went ahead and stopped it. So it's doing these counter bores and it's leaving this little post in the middle, which meant that for my next hole, I needed to machine it all the way from the top height to get rid of that. But just machining around in there, chips were getting stuck. It sounded horrible and that was in aluminum. So I already have to drill holes on here anyway. I had done it in this order to save a tool change. I'm gonna go ahead and do the tool change and I'm gonna drill the other holes and I'm gonna go ahead and drill that tap drill size through here. That's what's already set up. That'll get rid of the middle piece and then I'll counter bore around and do that. And then I'll be able to machine the next hole that goes all the way through. I'll be able to bore that from the start of the hole instead of having to bore it from the top. So I'll save some time there. I'll make up definitely more than what it's gonna take for the extra tool change. So another tweak to the code, I'm gonna go find where it picks up after this left off and get started with the center drill and pick it up from there. Well, I really thought there was enough meat there to hold that drill centered up in that hole, but I also really should have known better than to try to drill that nub out of there. Should have machined that one out and then tried this other process for getting rid of the rest of them. Um, I will say it does work significantly better going forward, so bores those holes out a lot better with uh, the meat gone out of the middle, but yeah, that was a fail. I was amazed that that drill didn't break. I went ahead and sharpened it and just reused it. We kept going after that. All right, well, we got the counter bores in there and it's working on going around the edge but man for some reason it doesn't seem to like this full three quarters of an inch depth of cut there but yeah we'll let it ride we'll see how it goes i will definitely put a new cutter on before i get one of these 4140 pieces in there we'll start with a fresh 3 8 bit see how it goes i should have been filming i was a little nervous going down in those counter bores going in there that full depth All right, it's gonna take a while for it to get all the way around here and do this. I'm guessing it's a little bit of chatter from that tool hanging out so far, so maybe it'll be, uh, it might cut a little better in that other material. Just never know. Well, it's a little loud and squeaky, but it's definitely making some chips now. We're starting to see a part come out of there. A little bit deeper it actually works it was kind of off and on with the chatter and the noise all the way around but it did keep cutting so i let it keep on going around and around there this definitely did not sell me on side milling yet so i clearly am just not doing it right there i blew some chips out of there you can see it a little better it's starting to look like something all right well there is the first side complete even with all that noise around there, I mean, it really isn't a bad chattery finish by any means. Curious to see what I'm gonna end up with on that 4140 and how that's gonna go. Overall, it's good. I did go adjust the program while this was running to change the finish cut down in those bores to only 10 thou, since it's so deep on the side of that cutter. And uh, that seems to be what's getting the chatter just from that hanging out. So I changed it to a 10 thou step over finish cut instead of 20 and uh, should be good. Also, because these are 12 millimeter, I've tried rigid tapping on this machine at half inch and it didn't seem to like it. So in 4140, I'm pretty sure I didn't wanna 
rigid tap those all the way through. So I will tap those by hand. Right now they don't look like they're all the way through because some of that's gonna get machined off the backside when we get over there, so. All right, let's get our jig plate mounted up in here, clean up some of this mess of chips, get our jig fixture plate all set up, and then we will bolt these onto the fixture plate and start working on the backsides. All right, we've got our next piece loaded to make the jig plate. This one, all the speeds and feeds are set for aluminum, so it should run pretty decent. It's about a 15 minute program. Face this off, cut a couple notches to get it to the width we need to lay that piece flat on there. Tap some holes, put our dowel pin holes in there so that we can line everything up. And then, uh, yeah, I'll finish hand tapping those holes and we'll be ready to bolt the first one on there. Oh, I guess I gotta make some dowel pins too, but I'll be knocking that out. So just about ready to do the backside. <laughs> There it is, there's our fixture plate, jig plate. Go get our quarter inch dowel pins made. I'm gonna go ahead and run a tap through those holes, get those all set, and we'll get our first piece bolted on. Work on the backside. All right, I've got it all tapped. Got my dowel pins in there to lock it in place and I am probed. We've lined up both of these off of this hole. So I've probed the center of that hole and I've got Z height off of the plate right here. So we're gonna get it bolted on and we're gonna do the thin plate first, do the contours and finish that one off. We're bolted in place and just two tools on this one. We're going to contour around the outside and then we're going to give it our chamfer and that's it. Two operations. cutting nicely in there. It seems to like this depth of cut better than that extra couple hundred thou on the thicker bracket. So again, going to be interesting to see how this will perform in that 4140, but at least the program so far seems to be good. Just have to see how the speeds and feeds are. Right now I've got my speed and feed maxed out on the path pilot so that I can actually speed it up here for the aluminum. Again, still not ideal aluminum speeds and feeds, but where I've got the program set. Didn't want to be making a bunch of changes, otherwise what's the point in running the prototype? If you're just going to go change the program all around, then you don't know what's actually going to happen. At least I don't. Still learning how to make sure that my programs are perfect from the get-go. Alright, going to take a while for it to just run around here a bunch of times and get this contoured. Okay, that one came out. Got a little chattery as it went around, but 
the finish cuts are light enough that it gets a pretty good finish around there on the edge. So makes for a good looking part when it's done. All right, let me get that unbolted off of there. We'll go stack it up on the other piece, see how it's looking, and then we'll get that other one bolted onto the plate and get it cut. All right, we got this last piece in here. So this is gonna be the back side of that thick piece. It's already machined around the contour. Since I've been having chatter issues around this side milling piece, I'm gonna go ahead and take another quarter inch off the top, and then it's gonna be side milling a lot less material. Hopefully that'll work out a little better. I can always reduce the cut. I'm only taking 50 thou though on the side milling. I thought that would be pretty decent. So let's go ahead and see how this one does. And this will be pretty much our last op other than tapping the holes in there and we'll see how this thing all fits together. Let's check it out. Got that hole peeking through there in the middle now. We finally cut through to hit that. So, so far it's looking pretty good. Tell you what, I really do love having the Pat Pilot console. So I have up the RPM almost double what I had it set for for the 4140 steel. I've significantly increased the feed from like eight inches per minute to 18. So it makes it pretty nice where you can test the program and I could do some quick manual adjustments on here to change RPM and feed without messing with the program. And that way when I come run it for the 4140, I'm just gonna put these back to regular, uh, their regular place, 50%, and then everything should run smooth. I'm still gonna be interested to see what kind of chatter problems I have on that 4140 with this cutter sticking out. Not sure what other options I have at this point though. I'm gonna just have to make do. Oh, we're starting to get some shape out of there now. It's kind of hit, hit and miss on the chatter. It'll go a couple laps with no chatter. Then I'll get it in a couple places. It goes away. So again, we'll see how it's going to do on the 4140. But overall, it's cruising along here pretty well. 39 minutes on the cycle time on this aluminum, and that's probably about half of where I'll be with the 4140 since I've got my feed rates and everything, my feed rates and my RPM more than doubled for most of it. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot longer cutting that 4140. One, I think after this, I just have a finished cut to go and it'll be done. There we go, yeah, it's been cutting pretty nice. So we should come around and I think just, maybe maybe there's one more rough cut, hard to see in there. Yep, 
Yeah, looking at how much is hanging over. Maybe we got one more rough cut after this and then a finished cut. And we'll check it out. Well, there it is. All right, I would say for our meetup there, not bad. I can feel a, just a bit of a step around on the side. On this side, it's almost perfectly not there. Same thing on the end. Can just, yeah, I can feel it, just a shadow of it there. But for just putting it on some dowel pins, I would say our flip over seam is pretty negligible. All right, let's see how our last couple ops do. We're gonna come down here and put the radius in. So we're gonna bore down and get our radius and then we're gonna come around, do our big bevel and then knock off this big steep bevel here on the front. So a couple ops left, see how she goes. impressed with how this radius around this boss came out that worked out really really nice you can't even feel that going in there left a little piece there on the front but when we come around to bevel it it's going to take care of that and knock that off so all right just got a couple steps left all right taking that nice big bevel off of there right now this is the third of three cuts, but it's still cutting that full width of that bevel right now. Looks all right, that big bevel on there. That took a nice cut off of that. All right, we got one up left. We got our chamfers around the bosses, little chamfers on the top of those holes. Let's get in there and knock out this last bevel. Well, there it is. That is complete. Just going to tap a couple of holes in there and then we'll be ready to go test fit this. All right, so I did a that 10 thou step over on there. And you can kind of see some little lines in there if you get the light on it just right, but you can barely feel them. So yeah, I think that 10 thou step over was great on that 3D contour. Don't do a lot of 3D step over, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going for there, but that 10 thou with that quarter inch ball nose seemed like a really nice finish on that, so that's good. All right, let's get that off there. We'll get some holes tapped and we'll go see how she all fits together. 
Well, there's a quick picture of it. You can see it fit together nicely. It's got 10 thou clearance in that width there between those two tabs sticking up. Fits in there nicely. Let's go see how it's going to fit on the actual part. Well, I would say we have a fit. That is on there nice. You can see that plastic one that came off. After he made it, he realized he needed a little more clearance in there. That's why we've got the, the bosses on there to give us that quarter inch, plus took some more off of that front edge. And that gave us the clearance needed in there. So that is down all the way. And we got this other half on there. I'm gonna ask him. I don't know that we need those countersinks quite so deep. I think that's maybe an opportunity to lift those up a little bit, leave a little more thickness on that piece. We'll check on that. Otherwise, I think that's the only potential design change. See what the customer likes. And then I think we're about ready to move on to the 4140. Try these out. But there we go, a couple pieces done. All right, well, that is what it looks like all together. Got that mounted, nice fit there, good alignment. Come around on there, get a look at that from the other side. Just need to get a hub and a rotor in there and really get a sense of what that's gonna look like. But I'd say prototype is ready to go. Time to start cutting some steel. Yeah, we'll just throw in a couple glamour shots here before we wrap up this video. I think this turned out all right. Really like how that looks lining up on those two parts. Caliper fits on there nicely. It's got just enough clearance around that caliper. I think this is going to work for the customer. Let's get these things made out of steel and be good to go. Well, YouTube, I think this is a good place to wrap up this video. I really thought I was going to be able to get the prototype and both of the steel parts made in this same video, but clearly these larger parts are taking me a little bit longer on the Tormach than I anticipated. So I think we'll wrap up after the aluminum one, and that's a good place. We're far enough into this right now. I'm going to call it success. I think the prototype definitely went well. The parts fit together well. Looks good. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Make sure you tune back in for part two of this, and we'll see what kind of success and what kind of challenges we face once we get into that heat-treated 4140. Hope you like this video. If it's the first video you found on the channel, I encourage you to get out there and uh, check out the rest of the channel. Look at some of the other videos on here, and if you like what you see, great time to hit that subscribe button. Would love to hear from you. Drop a like on here. If you like this video, drop a comment. It helps feed the YouTube algorithm and lets more people know that these videos are worth coming to take a look at. For those of you subscribed to the channel, as always, I sure appreciate you coming back to watch these and would love to hear from you as well. Drop a like, drop a comment on here. Hey, until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'm going to be here in the Blades to Be shop working on those steel parts, working on getting that next video out. And until then, y'all take care.